Hi everyone, I wanted to share um, a story from my childhood with you. When I was little, um, Ukraine was part of the former Soviet Union. And we used to wear those little stars with a uh, Lenin as a portrait in the middle. And I remember taking it off, of my school dress, uh, which was 100% wool, brown, was um a black apron or on special days we would wear a white apron and um i would take it off because i couldn't understand um why it was for and why should i wear a portrait of some linen on my chest instead of let's say a portrait of my mother but i always had this rebellion spirit in me when I got older, um, I got accepted into Pioneers because everybody had to go into Pioneers. Uh, but that's the, the story of all the children. Doesn't matter if you were in Kazakhstan, Moldova, or Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Uh, story of all the children whose countries belong used to be part of former Soviet Union. And I remember the, um, the director of our school uh, she was um, she was a teacher of the history also and she used to call my mother all the time at work and she was busy a professor of immunology with students with her projects and all this and she couldn't come to school all the time but she would always complain about Oksana uh, taking off or not coming to school with the red tie right like a pioneer and every day before uh, all the classes would start we would have to line up in front of the big red, you know, Soviet Union flag and there would be some sound made and we would do this and we would do Pioneers Always Ready. Uh, and I remember hiding on the second or third row behind my um, other classmates, not doing it. Um, because I could like I couldn't understand why I should be always ready when somebody up there in Moscow which I've never been to Moscow would call me to be ready for um, anyway I mean it's been an ongoing fight I got to the point that I talked um, the whole um, classroom into skipping the history class because the principal or director of the school was the teacher who was teaching it and she absolutely disliked me and I absolutely hated her because I mean, I just, all the nonsense that uh, they were trying to brainwash us with in school, I absolutely disliked and I, I was always picking up my mind in front of the teachers. I remember that now I just, it didn't bother me. I didn't care, but I understand now how my mother felt with all these phone calls every day. And, um, but it started even early. It started um, in kindergarten, daycare uh, here in the US when I would just refuse to eat their food. And the director of daycare would call my mother and say, well, Oksana just refuses to eat. And because my mother was used to teach me that you have to listen to your body. If you don't like the food or you don't want to eat, uh, then just don't. Um, and on May 19th, that's apparently celebrated as a Pioneer's Day, uh, the Day of Pioneers in, in Russia. Putin signed some paper uh, opening the groups. It's called the Big... Um, recess you know like recess in between the um lessons in school classes in school it's called big Re recess and all the people um so opening these groups in schools in universities for for all the students be able to join the pioneers again so they got the red ties out the those red hats and uh, I actually never, never wore mine. I just refused it. I remember how much I was hated by all the teachers in school. And, um, and it showed on all the television, right? And there is this uh, main propaganda, a woman, 
uh, Russian propaganda machine on the main channel. It's called Russia 24, I think, and also Russian Channel 1 because they are behind the um, uh, Iron Curtain now, like we used to be when Ukraine belonged to former Soviet Union. Basically, we were brainwashed in school by being told that our West and America are the worst countries in the world. You better not go there because people are crazy there. They are on drug. They're all, uh, mm, you know, transvestites and all this stuff. And they're all about sex only. and things like that and we're so great here in soviet union uh you know our mentality is different we're better we're healthier we're stronger and all this we are prior to them that's what i used to hear a lot uh, but not after ukraine separated from the former soviet union i remember that day and i remember how our school said no uniform anymore, free clothing, and everybody was so happy, no more pioneers and all this nonsense. Um, and I just watched so many videos, and I also talked to, in this uh, past uh, few days, uh, talked to my two clients from Tbilisi, Georgia, uh, two of my clients are from Russia, and then the third one was from uh, another one, fifth one from Kazakhstan. And we're all laughing at all the Russian people lining up and outside in schools everywhere. We're back to pioneers. Look at us. We're back to communism. So basically they have, uh, they pulled out all the Lenin's uh, portraits and Lenin statues all over the place. And uh, now they're decorating them with Aziz, right? So they're all officially communists and pioneers and all this. And they're wearing this big fluffy white bows that I refused uh, to wear too. And my mother couldn't do anything to me because I just wouldn't. Uh, and then you have to have the stupid the red hat, the stupid red tie, and the big huge bows like an idiot, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's my childhood. I mean, I just the memories I wanted to share with you because, I mean, I, you, you just don't, you're not aware of this. And then we started getting all this stuff like, uh, but the reason why I knew the truth about the West and the um, America, because my grandfather was in charge of the... Uh, of one department at the um, scientific university, right? The University of Science, and they were studying the, the waves, the different uh, scholar waves, microwaves, and all this. And he, he used to be invited a lot to, to teach um, outside of the country. And he would go a lot abroad. My mother would go abroad too, but not as much. And they would, they would bring me, you know, they would tell me stories and, bring me books and everything. And because my mother used to speak English to me since I was little, I could read the, all the books in English. And my brother uh, did too later. And that's why I used to tell my um, kids in class how, how everything was the opposite of what they were teaching us. But they were so brainwashed by the system, they wouldn't believe me. It's the same exact thing is happening in Russia now. Plus, my clients from Ukraine told me that when Russians occupied the uh, Ukrainian daycares and schools, uh, they took down all the portraits of uh, Ukrainian artists and poets that we value, uh, the poems of, of whom we narrate and everything and read uh, and you know value so much as they you know, they, they're just basically the ones uh, who uh, represent you, Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian language. Uh, so Russians put like portraits of Lenin everywhere. Just Oksana, it's amazing. It just, you walk into the school that is completely destroyed. They took off all the um, interactive screens everywhere that were on the on the walls and all the equipment, obviously, all the computers are stolen, but there is like portraits of Lenin everywhere. And they say, welcome to back to Soviet Union. 
that's how crazy the whole thing is and i feel like uh, a lot of americans and europeans don't understand that putin really wants all the estonia latvia lithuania mm, uh, kazakhstan moldovia uh, azerbaijan uh, all these countries and so on so on to go back and reform a soviet union that's his crazy plan um but i also after watching uh this there's this woman skabeva those who watch russian uh news know who she is she's like number one paid by putin propaganda machine a representative right a woman who is always very aggressive and she looks aggressive but she always wears this sweater almost all, all almost always with the big reptilian um figure uh, i'll post it in the um in in the um uh, as a thumbnail for you to see which is uh, very interesting it proves the point that russia has become a country of reptilians so basically it's controlled by reptilians of course there are nice people who are against the system but for them it's easier to buy the narrative uh, produced and presented to them by reptilians because reptilians pressure their survival instinct in people if you refuse to believe them they would put you in prison if you say anything against it they would put you in prison if you refuse to go into the army they'll put you in prison uh, so it's like either life or death and they keep showing the um like the shows if you watch russian shows they'll beat each other up right there and it's done on purpose of course they try to separate those people who are trying to you know beat each other up um women do that men do it doesn't matter who it is just they all do it and i just it shocked me i just realized i used to watch those shows when i used to be in ukraine still asleep and i thought i, I didn't think anything of it because i was a child but they're trying to put it into your head, into your subconscious when you're little. That's why that it's okay to hit each other. It's, it's okay to beat each other up. And that's what they're pushing and pushing and pushing on Russians. But imagine living all your life. If we um, became independent in Ukraine and got back to our roots of, you know, um, just being cultivating the... Um, uh, the fields uh you know all this uh things like softness there's some some softness to our country as opposed to russia you know and i started realizing it only now because the war changed my perception about everything and um today my uh my friend from uh from prague um she told me that um oksana I have a few friends from Prague and she told me, Oksana, you should watch this, um, this guy from Prague, he's a journalist, he collects and interviews all the victims of abuse by Russians when they go into villages and occupy them and start uh, raping um, uh, the, the little girls. He said one day, just from yesterday, he collected 40 interviews from 40 mothers whose children were raped. One was one year old girl raped by, by a um, big candle used by Russian soldiers. Uh, one was two year old girl who didn't survive, she died. And her mother was right here with her eye, uh, arms tied up. And she was placed there and forced to watch how they're raping her two year old. And then, of course, there are 14, 15 year old girls raped and beaten up, and now they're pregnant. And because um, it's forbidden, right, in Poland, where they're now uh, to have um, to abort the babies, even though they've been raped. Uh, so he's, he's helping them to, um, to move to other country where they can do the abortion before it's too late. 
and she said the world has to know about it because if you push it away you say yes to evil you say yes to rituals you say yes to church rituals and the ground facility rituals that are all over the place she's aware they are in czech republic too in slovak in slovakia everywhere around the world where church exists where all this organization exists and they're all over the place every european person i know told me that in every little uh, village in switzerland in italy there is a church and there are underground tunnels and everything under the churches where they do all these rituals was raping and killing and torturing little children so we've got to be aware we can just push away and and switch to another channel where it's, it's fun stuff there's another thing this one ukrainian um person whom i really respect he said you know how interesting it is so i'm on facebook i post something about russian soldiers how they like literally conversations are recorded through the satellite system and then they post them on youtube a lot of them are in russian because you know russian soldiers speak russian but some of them they put ukrainian subtitles very small number of them put it, uh, uh, english subtitles but this one guy just co tells him father that hey you, you know hi how are you i'm just we occupied another ukrainian village but they're pushing us out we are just like trying to interrogate the villagers and asking them where ukrainians are in which woods and what positions and and this guy didn't want to, to talk and we just cut his ear off and and his father doesn't say anything yes like it's normal like it's it just just normal thing to do it and then other ukrainian soldiers returned like when they do exchange of um uh soldiers right russians exchange for ukrainians back and ukrainian soldiers uh you know are sent back like all beaten up uh without teeth like they, they knock their teeth out just just for fun just interrogating them or um uh you know when they don't say or it's, it's usually that they don't know just no no and a lot of those are just civilian people uh, on top of this, in Lugansk and Donetsk, that uh, yeah, you know that the uh, Russians occupied, what they're doing now in Kherson, in Kherson, um, uh, that they, you know, trying to liberate now, they're just taking all the uh, men from 16 to 65, and even the women now, uh, we're told they're um, through the people are telling, you know, in those messages, conversations phone calls to their relatives and that's how i know from my friends who live there that they even take the women there now so they take ukrainian men and women dress them in soldiers and tell them okay fight with your ukrainian brothers and sisters so they just throw them on the field as meat that's how they call them so basically ukrainians have nothing to do but basically shoot their own people because russians don't have enough people anymore and a lot of russians refuse to go fight because they know um ukrainians are good fighters and they would be killed the most probable so they killed uh, already seventeen thousand ukrainian people from donbass and uh, lugansk they have been killed uh, basically by ukrainians because they're forced because you you imagine they put the line of ukrainian um dressed up ukrainians dressed up as russians and behind the russians are standing as a huge line and they say if you step behind or refuse to fight and shoot your own brothers and sisters who are also ukrainians from your land will shoot you and and there is a lot of cases when people would refuse and they would shoot them but because they would want to show the others that here's what's gonna happen to you if you don't um, do that what you're told to do and um, so it's a very tough situation it's a crazy insane situation right now what is going on and it's um, if you go to um, Google Timothy Snyder Timothy 
S N I D E R, professor of Yale University. I looked him up energetically. He's a good guy and a very positive energy. And he writes about um, how Russia, what Russia tells Russians about Ukraine, and what he thinks that the uh, Russia is a uh, turned into a Nazi country with all the Z's, with the all all the way how they line up people and in the name of Lenin they're going back to communism and they consider themselves uh, the proper prior race to others and here's what one of his quotes I wrote down because it's it's very valuable to know about it so what he wrote Timothy Snyder a professor of Yale University the war against Ukraine is a return to traditional fascist language and practice other people are there to be colonized that's how Russians think Russia is innocent because of its ancient past the existence of Ukraine is an international conspiracy war is the answer there's another thing that concerns me a lot as of sea because Russians destroyed all the infrastructure now there is a huge leakage of the sewage system uh, basically all the stuff that goes from the toilets went into Azov Sea and the sea life is dying so um, um, scientists predicting that Azov Sea is going to be a dead sea very very soon because the temperatures are rising the summer is coming and all this stuff it's basically turning into a big sewage uh, sea and all the sea life is going to be dead pretty soon. And Russians don't care. They just don't care. They don't care about life. They don't care about killing babies, mothers, uh, torturing people, burning everything up. If they, can't take it, if they cannot take a village, they just bomb it until everything is down to dust. Just what they did to... Uh, Mariupol and now every day they take up to 400 people from Mariupol to those filtration camp camps which are really concentration camps because they strap everything down to underwear they look for tattoos if you have any tattoo they'll kill you or they'll take your children away from you if they want to if they decide that the mothers um, you know, the mother is a medical worker, they would take your children for sure and send them to Russia and put them up for adoption or put them up and put them in some orphan. Um, oh, there's an, another interesting thing my Russian client sent to me, thanks to her. The um, What they're talking about on Russian TV right now, that all the orphans and all the children brought from Ukraine, thousands of children brought from Ukraine, um, are going to be dispersed in Russian families. And I think it's done on purpose because my intuition tells me that they, uh, so basically they say they want to close down all the orphanages in Russia um, because they came up with a better solution for all the orphans. They want to integrate them into Russian families and they'll pay those Russian families to raise those children because they totally want, like they said, a lot of times you see on the slogans in Russia, Ukrainians, you will forget Ukrainian language, you will forget your land, you will forget your culture because you belong to Russia or, you know, Ukraine doesn't exist, things like that. So that's what they want to do to kids from Ukraine. They want to brainwash them to the point they become Russian. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. Well, I can I can finish up with this um, Sergei uh, Lavrov, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Affairs of Russia. You know why he's hated by all the Jewish people now because he said that the Jewish blood was in um, um, uh, Hitler. Hitler had Jewish blood. Here's what he said exactly. Hitler had Jewish blood. Lavrov, Sergei Lavrov, Minister of Foreign Affairs, said that Hitler had Jewish blood in him too. And smart Jews say that Jews themselves are the ones who promote anti-Semitism. 
So basically he was indicating that Jews, Jews were killing themselves in the World War II and now Ukrainians are killing themselves. And also indicating that Zelensky, who is a Jew, um, you know, he is an anti, uh, uh, he promotes anti-Semitism, which is really crazy nonsense. Um, and, well, here's another thing I want to finish with. Looking here at this wonderful card sent to me by Patty, my former client. Um, yeah, she saw me. She's sending me love and thinking about me and it really matters when people send me messages cards like that and oh that's that's amazing because my friend from baku azerbaijan who lived through the war herself and her mother her sister and the war just happened last last um a year in 2021 also my um clients from georgia my clients from Chechnya they told me this one thing but my friend from Baku was the very first one who called me when the war started and she said Oksana get ready to this one thing you're gonna be the one standing and feeling everything with your heart with your soul you're gonna be the one waking up in the middle of the night checking the news calling your friends, calling your brother, asking what is going on there. You're going to be the one feeling every little story of little girl rape by Russian soldiers, by mother killed in front of their uh, her kids by Russian soldiers, by the villages and cities and towns completely bombed to dust by Russian soldiers. Because um, that's what my country lived through and because Azerbaijan was uh, attacked by Armenia but Russians were helping Armenia and Russians were helping Armenia a lot strategically and with forces with armed forces too and that's exactly their strategy was if you can take a village if you face resistance they would just bombard you to the point to destroy everything all the infrastructure every single house they would destroy down to dust they would torture people they would kill people they would do it on daily basis systematically and that's exactly what happened in Irpin, in bucha in many many other other villages um which um which is going to be a horror when we really find out the real true numbers uh, it's going to be much, many more than 27,000 people that they report now about Mariupol that are dead, that they know for sure. Um, but that's what she told me. It's going to be in your heart, in your soul. And those people who listen to you, who whom you consider your friends, you'll see their true faces, you'll see their true colors. Some of them will stand with you until the war is over and will be counting days of that war. In others would just walk away some of them would even tell you please don't tell me anything about the war I cannot take it or I don't want to listen about it, or I don't want to hear about it or they would simply rely on a Russian propaganda machine and would say that uh, you, Ukraine sold its country or you know Ukraine is doing it to itself or Ukraine deserves it or things like that they would be hurting you and they would because they're weak people they either have semi-artificial souls or they don't have a strong um, mind, a heart, a soul connection, and they're not connected to their emotional, mental bodies that every single human in every human body has. And without this, you would not get an important experience because when you get this experience, just like when I was a little girl and I couldn't watch any any wars war movies and later on when i woke up i realized why and i i found out in my sessions it is because i participated in the ryan wars and when you once participated in any war or you once felt the pain of those people you would never be in you will never be in this situation even if you listen to a story and you feel through it 
it doesn't mean that you're gonna manifest this to for yourself but it only means that you live through it you know how it is your soul your subconscious recorded this a lot of times is your own experience and this experience is not going to be repeated and that's exactly why i'm living in the us i'm not living in ukraine i'm not going through this physically because i've been through this physically many many times on other planets in other parallel lives um i lived through nazi invasion on sirius a as a little boy i was taken away from my mother and father there and i remember it i know exactly how it feels um and those people who are just stirring away and saying no 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 i'm gonna close my eyes i'm not gonna watch it i'm not gonna hear it those are the ones who are actually gonna manifest this happening to them one way or the other in their lives so they're gonna really feel how it feels to be in this situation like that because deep down they're controlled by fear and they're guided by fear not to look in this direction not to accept it as truth they would rather justify things and the very strong people from russia that i i have in my life and i'm friends with they tell me that one of them is i'm really thankful um that she's my friend and she's my former client and she's still my friend and she said that russia is built on lies and it's a country of fools of stupid people and i admit that that's a fact and by doing that she's showing how strong she is how strong her soul is and how wonderful she is at a soul level at a physical level she's just a beautiful person all around and um she's there to tell me the truth what is going on in the country so i can tell all of you and so she said we're just basically going back to lenin's time to communist time to, to the times when we're going to be totally behind the iron curtain we just have a few russian channels that's all we don't have any information from the world what is going on there all we know that the whole world is against russia and all the countries are bad and Russia is the only country that is the best and superior to, to others. And she really, uh, she would love to leave the country, but she can't. And uh, that, that's, that, that's her own tough situation there. But I believe that the uh, Russia will fall apart into multiple um, parts like Roman. It's going to be a great fall just like Roman Empire fell and she'll be able to leave the country or she'll be able to have a better life rather than what she has now when her children in school are forced to collect items for Russian soldiers because Putin doesn't have enough money for them and they're forced to write um, letters to Russian soldiers to support them at war because they're totally um demoralized and they don't know what they're fighting for they don't know why they're forced to kill people why they're told to rape uh, children um and besides there's so much information coming up that they're all on drugs because um there are uh, different people who told me there are bags and bags of white stuff found in uh, russian tanks abandoned by russians in the fields and the farmers you know it's like a word of mouth right it's called when people share information and you know it from people and that's how you know that it's truth because if hundreds of thousands of people talk about the same thing that they found in russian tanks or artillery or um cars then you know it's true uh that's what makes them uh, psychopaths in who just uh, and also they use alcohol a lot and um so that's that's about it that's what i wanted to share with you tonight uh thank you for listening and thank you for being with me of those who who know exactly what i'm doing it just part of my soul's mission here to spread the truth and i must do it i i feel it and i always go by the feeling and I recommend that you go by the feeling too. Just like I tell my children. The same thing my mother used to tell me. 
if you feel like eating once a day eat once a day you know if you feel like this uh this woman or person on the street is doing the wrong thing and uh trying to hurt a pigeon or you know some other animal uh stand up to that person tell the person don't pay attention don't don't be afraid that you're small you're small but your soul is as big as that person's and a lot of time those people don't have a soul but you still have to speak up just always say your truth because only in that mode of being fearless we can win and we can transition to a better world uh, have a good night everybody or a good day um till next time thank you <laughs>